Hey guys, it's Dr. Roach coming back. Um, today my topic is formula shortage. So you guys have known that we've been in a shortage, really um, a little bit of shortage the whole time of COVID-19, but it's definitely gotten worse in the last two or three months um, due to the Similac recall. So in the state of Virginia, um, Similac is what's on our formulary for a week. And we've really seen a really bad shortage, but it's been nationwide. And it, and it didn't help um, the bacteria outbreak that was probably a few months ago now, um, but now we're trying to figure out how to overcome it, right? So here are some steps I'm gonna give you today on some tips on how to do it. So as you guys know, I'm a pediatrician here in Danville, Virginia, and I just wanna give the advice for all people that are considering um, feeding soon or breastfeeding or formula feeding, or if you are currently going through it and what you should do throughout that. So tip number one, first is breastfeeding. So if you are pregnant or if you just had a baby or even if you have already had a baby. So I strongly consider breastfeeding for one cost. So formula is expensive nowadays. So if you've ever went down the aisle, some cans are 20, 30, $40, $50, $60 a can. Just depends on the size. So it is very expensive. So Breast for one is always best, but I always encourage everybody to just feed the baby. So I want the baby to feed and grow. So I always would love for you to breastfeed. And those benefits are really shown in the first six months. So mom gives the antibodies to baby, and that really helps baby trying to fight off infections and stuff like that and get antibodies to help um, through their development. But if you're not able to breastfeed or if you're not interested in breastfeeding, I really just want you to feed the baby. So if you're currently going through this shortage and maybe you breastfeed or maybe you didn't previously and your baby's a few months old you can try some relactation so i would always consult a lactation consultant if you're going to try this but um some people have been successful with trying to relactate but do know it's extremely hard and i definitely wouldn't encourage doing that by yourself okay um in some cases it would not be possible but that is one thing to consider during this shortage the second thing to consider is human um, donated breast milk. So I'm not saying go all find somebody, Billy Joe Bob Sue off the street and getting her breast milk, but I am recommending that you consider um, the donated milk. So there are a lot of moms that are over producers or their baby is 12 months and they stop breastfeeding and they have all this milk stored and they donate it. A lot of times it's used in the NICU and stuff like that, which is an intensive care unit for babies, but there are places that you can go purchase breast milk. So you would find that, and I'll put it on the bottom of the screen, but if you go to Human Milk Banking Association of North America, then you'll be able to find where there is a local place that has donated breast milk. So hopefully all those things kind of, for one, helps promote breastfeeding, but two, hopefully it helps you to find some sources if you're looking for some right now. So number two, I would recommend against trying any home recipe. So there's a lot of recipes going on around on the internet that were from like the 1930s, 1940s. Yes, people did make their own formulas back in the day. Formula was really invented in the like um, late 50s, 60s. So people did have to um, do different things back then. But do know that the infant mortality was a lot different. So kids were dying, or I should say infants were dying at an extremely higher rate than they are now. So the infant mortality now is somewhere between like 18 and 28 per 1,000 births. In the 1930s, it was closer to like 50 to 70 um, infants per 1,000 births. So that's a dramatic increase. Some of that is due to different um, infections. Sometimes it's due to just contamination that um, kids would have due to those homemade formulas. So please don't make your own formula. I know you're seeing things go around, but Throughout this video, I have about six other solutions that are gonna hopefully help you find what you need, but I would definitely recommend against making your own formula. Number three, I would um, advise you to not change the way the formula is made. So on the back of your can, if it says two scoops for two ounces, 
don't try to do one scoop for two ounces and do more water and less formula because you're going to dilute it. And what happens with that? So I understand you're trying to preserve, make it longer for the babies to have formula. But what happens with that is it increases the amount of free water babies have, and that can lead to electrolyte abnormality. So their sodium can be thrown off, which can lead to babies having seizures and even death. So we definitely don't want you to dilute the formula. So whatever the instructions stay on the back, please follow those, okay? So the next step is switching brands. So one thing you can do, so I would say like Similac Sensitive, so that's usually the orange can, has been so hard to find for probably three to four months now. So one thing you can do is switch brands. So you can, if you use Similac, you can go to Infamil. So um, another thing is you can go to Gerber, you can go to Members Mart, you can go to Parents' Choice, you can go to the Walgreens version, you can go to different versions that are similar. The best way to find out what is similar to what you're actually giving your infant right now is through the WIC website. So most of the states have made um, different conversions. So they'll have like Similac Sensitive and they'll have the different ones in Gerber and Infamil and all the different brands parents choice and it'll have the different ones that compare to it so the website for the national way to find that is www.fns.usda.gov backslash wic which is wic backslash infant slash uh, dash formula dash waiver dash status and i will put that um in the box and below so that you guys can see that website so hopefully that helps you out but um, one thing you can do is definitely switch brands. You can also go to different stores. So instead of maybe going to the big Walmarts, the supermarkets, you can go, go to the small like grocery stores or even um, sometimes some pharmacies carry it or even going to like big lots, going to different kind of stores that may have um, sources of formula, but not as much will also help you find some formula. So. Um, doing that, maybe even going to a smaller city or a city that is maybe 20 minutes away from your house and not just your one store that you go to might help you find some as well. So another tip I have for you guys is your pediatrician's office. So a lot of offices, so get samples. I will tell you that our office, we did have a lot of samples, but most of ours got recalled, unfortunately. So we had to throw away cans and cans and cans. And so we've just gotten a new shipment in They've all not been verified yet that they're not recalled, but ask me your pediatrician office. So families come in and ask me all the time, and if I have some, I give it to them. Um, but that is not always gonna be the case, but at least going to the office and asking, okay? Um, another place to try um, is those small stores I was talking about. And then you can also introduce some solids. That's not gonna be their full source of growth and nutrients, but introducing solids. So you can start introducing baby foods as early as four to six months. So as long as babies are able to hold their head up like I'm doing now, and they're not flappy like this, then you're able to introduce some solids. That's not gonna replace the formula, but as one thing that can actually help you um, during this time. So my last two tips are what not to use and then what could be the last alternative for you. So one thing is goat milk. So goat milk and different like plant-based um, milks are not recommended. So there is soy milk that is a normal um, milk that you can give, but goat milks and other different plant-based milks are not recommended for infants, especially under the age of six months. So the infancy is in their first year of life, but definitely in those first six months is very critical. But in the first 12 months, we don't want to give them goat milk and we don't want to give them um, any kind of plant-based milks as well. But one alternative, so if you're really in a crunch, you have went to different stores, you tried a pediatrician office, um, you have looked for donated breast milk, um, you have not you've not changed the concentration you haven't made any um, home recipes and you've kind of reached all of the sources that you can what you can do is give like cow's milk so you can give like whole milk but this is only a temporary solution and again i'm saying this after you have tried everything on this list okay um that you can do that we hope that it's only a temporary thing meaning that you're only giving it for maybe two or three days 
at the week max. And this is only for babies that are over six months. If it's under six months, they have to have formula. And this is not say, oh, baby six months. Oh, I can give cow's milk from six months to 12 months. No, because it's gonna lead to iron deficiency, which will means that their red blood cells are less than what they should be. Um, and that can lead to bleeding and other things. So I do not want this to be alternative for you, but this is the last case scenario. You can't find anything. You are doing everything you can. And maybe in like two days, the new shipment comes in. It's okay to give some cow's milk for two days, okay? Um, but this is not a long-term fix. I do not want anybody to use this as any medical advice um, and that they're gonna do this for the next six months. But I'm really saying this is the last alternative. This is the only thing um, that is recommended. So all these guidelines I found are on like healthychildren.org. Um, the AAP has made a statement. The American, I think it's the American Society of the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine has all made its statements and I've reviewed all of these and it's pretty much the biggest thing that all of them um, talk about. And um, most of them really small reading, about two to four pages, but um, that's pretty much what they summarize. So hopefully this helps you. Hopefully um, we'll be out just shorter soon. So I think Abbott, which is one of the leading companies in, in America that makes um, formula, especially the special brands, Hopefully we'll start reproducing formula in about six to eight weeks, according to the article um, around May 20th that they released. Hopefully um, that'll be true and they'll be back on the shelves, but I see that we'll probably be in this problem for another about two months. And that's just because of COVID. That's just because of kind of inflation that's going on. That's because of the Similac, Alp, um, Similac shortage and the Similac recall and all that kind of combined has made us in this crisis that we are in now. But together we can all get through it. So if you see something, you see um, some formula and you know somebody that's looking for it, um, help, help each other help each other out as a society. We actually have to just do better with that. And then don't try to buy, like if you see they just put formula out, don't buy all 12 cans they just put out there. Um, try to limit it to like two or three um, so that your child will have enough, but then the next person that comes by. So, um, and then if you're actually one of those sellers online, they're trying to sell it for a hundred dollars a can and you're out here trying to make it harder for people, please just reconsider um, and stop doing that so that we all can make it through this pandemic together. Have a good one.